Good morning. Thank you for joining me here this morning at Jesus is Lord Ministry. I hope you're having a blessed week. I'm excited to be here with you today. Uh, it's always good to take time to get in God's word. In, in uh, Proverbs, it says, Let these words not depart from your eyes, for their life to those who find them, health to all their flesh. Another translation even says, medicine unto the body. So we're going to receive our medicine this morning. Our prescription has come in. A nice strong dose of the word of God will bring health to our body, clearness to our mind, refreshing to our soul. Acts 3.19 says, repent and be converted, that your sins will be washed away, and let times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. So God's designed this for us to be in his presence. He, he, he made this that we have access now to the presence of God. Remember, we're not, this isn't just another religion. This isn't just another belief system, but we have fellowship, relationship with Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and there's times of refreshing. So we just ask, we'll pray right now, Lord, we just ask you for times of refreshing. Help us, Lord, release everything, every hindrance, every sin, every weight, every distraction, everything that we haven't done, Lord, everything, every mistake that we made. God, your grace is greater than our mistakes. Your power is above our failures. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we and we release every negative thing to you even now that the times of refreshing would come. So refresh us today, Lord. Give us a great start to this morning diving into your word. And we just thank you for it. If you agree with that, you can say amen. Times of refreshing. You know that uh, that's that's one of the signs that we got to make adjustments or we need to we need to 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 seek help is when we can't find the presence of the Lord. Sometimes you'll see like uh, uh, when God is moving in a church service like he does here. Every time I come to Jesus as Lord, there's always something going on and God is always moving. But you'll find when people run out of service or they're quick to leave, it, it's actually a sign that they're not in the presence because who in their right mind would run out of the presence of God? If you think about it like that. So, and that's happened to me over the times. I've had trouble getting into the presence of God. Um, and uh, we need to help people do that. We need to help people get into the presence of God. So if you're having trouble with that, don't be upset. You may just need to make some adjustments and, and God will gladly bring you in to his presence. But But that's how we live. We live off the word of God. It says worship him in word and spirit. Well, we, that's the word of God, but his spirit is part of it. Dry religion will kill you. You don't want to be there. Word without spirit is, is dry and dead. We need the presence and spirit of God. So, um, yes, uh, let's look at the Mark chapter 11 here. I want to talk a little bit about faith and um, what that means and a little bit, some examples in the Bible that we can look at to encourage us because even today, God has spoken things to your heart that haven't come to pass yet. And in that time of waiting is when faith really needs to be applied. Okay, Sometimes people think faith is just believing in God, but it's really not. Faith is not just believing in God. It really is to be, believe in God's word. The words that God has put on paper here for us to read. That's what we need to believe. Many people believe in God or or different gods, I guess you could say. But really having faith in God is believing in his word. And you'll see why that matters here as we go forward. Uh, because because it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an active. Faith is very active. It's not really yesterday. It's not just right now. Although it is right now, but it's also in the next hour, the next day, the next month. Faith is a continual walk. But let's look here in Mark 11, chapter 22. This is uh, after Jesus had cursed a fig tree. They, the disciples were, were, were surprised. They said, behold, the tree. This is in 20, verse 21, if you want to follow Mark eleven twenty one, 21. It says, Peter called the remembrance unto him. Master, that fig tree which you cursed is withered away. And this is how Jesus responds to them concerning that. Verse 22, it's, he, Jesus says to them, have faith in God. There you see it, but but what Jesus meant was not just believe that there is a God, but believe in his word. Remember, the word is what makes things happen here. We're not just believing in God, we're believing in every letter of his word. Every verse today, we're just going to believe it. 
Every scripture, we're just going to believe it. I remember one time if I had I'd struggled, you know, people, a lot of times they'll struggle with things. Well, I don't know about that. Or what about this? Or, you know, they have a lot of questions about the word. Or how do I know? You know how you could fix that problem? You just believe every word of the Bible. That's solve, that'll solve all your problems. Just believe the word. One day I decided, God, I'm just going to believe you from cover to cover. Genesis to Revelation. I'm going to believe you, Lord. I'm never going to question the word again. And from that day forward, I've been set free. Do I have all the answers? No. Do I understand everything? No. Do, is that a big deal? No. I, I believe and God has taken me on a journey and I just believe his word. So if you struggle with that, that's how you get set free. Just believe God's word. You can trust it. But look at verse 23 of Mark 11. For verily I tell you that whoever shall say to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said will come to pass. He'll have whatever he says. And there's where you'll find a lot of, uh, of teaching comes out of this because of talking about ha believing it while you're speaking, believing before you have it, let you have it, and it will come. Did I, 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 hopefully you can make sense of what I said there, but um, verse 24, it kind of simplifies it. Therefore, this is Jesus speaking again here, what things you desire or want or are asking God for, you could say. That's my amplified version of it, okay? I'm expounding a little to em put emphasis on it. When you pray, so that also includes believing, asking, all those things fall under that. When you pray, believe that you have them and you'll have them. Uh, so this is huge here for us to understand that um, because in Hebrews 11 it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, uh, so we see that faith uh, described here is, is believing God's word and using God's word and believing it, actively believing it for today, right now, for this moment, for the next hour, the next week, the next month. But you see, we have to receive it first before it comes to pass. I remember leaving church uh, a few weeks ago and a lady said to me, we had a healing service and, and she said, you know what? I, I, that really helped me some of the comments that were and, and some of the scriptures that talked about having to believe that you have it. She said, you know, I always struggled that I wasn't worthy enough to get it. And because of that, you see, that would be a tactic of the devil to keep you from getting something. He'll tell you, well, you're not worthy. When a child of God thinks they're not worthy to be healed, they can't be healed because that's not faith. Faith is I am a child of God. I am worthy and I receive it now. So that it's a, it's just a teaching issue that we have in the church. A lot of weird religious stuff gets into people. I don't know where it comes from, uh, but you'll find it. It's in every church. That's the purpose of uh, the pastor and the teaching is to get that stuff out, get those tears out of the garden. And you hear that kind of stuff. But so you never want to overlook people where people are at because something so simple could hold somebody back. Like her, she said she she felt freedom in the fact now she really believes that it is God's will to heal her. And that's just speaking about healing. But another one you'll hear, another wrong uh, comment that people will say is, they'll say this, if God wants me to have it, he'll give it to me. But when, you, <laughs> when people say that, and, and it's talking about stuff mainly that God does want to give them. He does want all of us filled with the Spirit. He wants us all praying in tongues. He wants us all prophesying. He wants us all stepping into the gifts of the Spirit. He wants us all to be able to minister, to do the work of an evangelist. God wants all of us to do those things. But if we don't take it by faith, we can't have it. And so when you hear people say that, well, if God wants me to have it, it's a kind of a religious saying. If God wants me to have it, he'll give it to me. And a lot of times you'll hear that with tongues or different things like that. That's what they'll say, but really, that that's not a comment of faith. That that's a that's a that that will get you nothing. God doesn't operate. Well, God, if you want it to be that way, then it'll be that way. He, he that's not how we properly use God's word. So, be aware of that because those types of thoughts and and that type of thinking won't bless you very much. It, it will it will prevent God's word. Just like healing, the lady that said, "Well, I, I never felt worthy, or I I didn't think that it was really God's will." And then people fall into the, well, God puts sickness on people all the time to teach them a lesson and this and that and the other thing. If you think like that, it's going to be very hard for you to receive healing because you'll get sick and think it's God doing it. 
How can you get healed and, and if you're accepting it at the same time? You see, so there's a lot of controversy there. You really have to sort that out. And that stuff creeps into the church. And all of us, I'm sure, and myself included, have had thoughts like that in, in the past. But just like this says here, Jesus said, if you believe and ask, then if you believe that you have it, you'll have it. And the interesting thing here is uh, it says that... Uh, Okay, let's say, uh, let's see, it says uh, that he say shall come to pass whatsoever he saith. It has a lot of emphasis on saying. There's a lot of emphasis on saying. So really God's opened it up for us to whatever you want to believe for, you can believe for. Uh, I remember hearing about a pastor overseas, I think it was in South Korea, he, he started a church and God would continually challenge him. He believed for like 20 people and that he thought that would be great. Actually, I know a pastor now just started church. He's believing for numbers like that. Just if I could have that. But it's funny because when the person gets there, the pastor gets there, guess what God's going to do? He's going to challenge them. Why don't you believe for 100? Why don't you believe for 200, 3, 4, 5, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000? And that particular pastor, his church went up to 750,000. Um, but it was because God kept challenging him. Now, it may be hard to believe for that at first, right? It'd be hard to believe for 750,000 people to come to your church on day one. But it wouldn't be hard to believe for just a small number. So you see how faith grows. Faith grows along with our uh, walk with God. Because we have testimonies. As faith comes, we begin to have testimonies. So just, just keep that in mind that we just got to put an emphasis on be careful of all the, the, the thinking that keeps us from our blessing. God wants to bless us. God wants to heal us. God wants to deliver us. All these things are ours. I remember hearing a pastor talk about uh, relating to deliverance. He was struggling with, with, with things or whatever it was, some kind of stronghold. I can't remember what it was exactly, but it was just something that he just had trouble breaking. He said he'd fast and pray. He just wasn't seeing the breakthrough. And then he ran across one scripture. And that's what helped set him free. One scripture. I think it's in Joel 2.32 possibly where it says, Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be delivered. And he used that scripture and he began to say, You know what? I, I take hold of that. I'm delivered today. Today I'm delivered. Today I'll be free. And, and he found deliverance that way. So, But it wasn't until he, he acknowledged that it's his. You see? He said, that's mine. I take it now. That's why you'll hear many people say in Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is. That, that, that translation is great because it's active. Now meaning right now today. Even right now today. Um, even as I'm driving here today, I was using faith. I said, Lord, you know, I, you know, I, I, I don't really feel like preaching today. I don't know if I really feel like, you know, but God, by faith, I believe as I begin to do it, you'll be with me. I mean, that's kind of how it works. You can use that as an example. Similar to uh, any kind of thing. You could wake up not feeling good, but by faith you could be healed within the hour, within the two hours. You, you have to just believe, okay. As I go forward, God, I believe that you'll touch me. As I go to work today, God, I believe that you're healing me. As I go to church, Lord, I believe that you're touching me. The funny thing about that healing service recently was that uh, a lot of people weren't there. They missed church and, and their excuse, or not their, you know, I don't want to say their excuse, but the reason they didn't come was they were sick. So just think about that for a minute. Missing church for a healing service because you're sick. Does that be, Can you line all that up? I was like, how does that work? If you're sick, you should be at church. Why? Because that's where you're going to get your healing, not staying at home. And we're not picking on people, but um, isn't that funny how the day that God is doing miracles and healing, many people aren't there because of they're sick. Uh, so that that is a by faith thing. By faith. Now faith is. Don't pro prolong it. Don't 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 let it tarry. Take it right now. But let's look at uh, some stories here to kind of encourage us because we got a little backstory. I mean, that's a that's a couple services in itself, just faith. But I just wanted to to kind of talk a little about it. But now let's look at uh, Abraham here. I want you to see how uh, how Abraham's faith was as God began to call him and some of the things that he went through. Chapter twelve, verse one to five. Now the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy, thy, thy family and from thy father's house unto another land that I will show you. 
I will make of you a great nation and bless you and make your name great and, and you will be a great blessing. And I will bless them that bless you and curse him that curse you. And in thee shall all the families of the earth, the earth be blessed. That's just funny to me in a way because of the powerful, the amount of the words God's speaking is probably blew Abraham away, you know. He's probably thinking, what? Like, imagine God speaking that. That, that might be hard to grab a hold of. But... But look at Abraham here in verse 4. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. Lot went with him. A Abraham was 75 years old when he left his home. His home. Imagine that. Just think. Like we think Abraham had maybe some easy life or something. Not at all. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not yet 75. And I couldn't imagine just doing something for 75 years. And then all of a sudden God out of nowhere says, pack up and go. I'm calling you out to some other land. How many people would do that? Very few people would do that. I can tell you that right now. Just to put yourself in Abraham's shoes, 75 years old, you have a family, everything's established, you have a farm, you have whatever, and all of a sudden God calls you and, and then says all these things, I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to overwhelm you with blessing. I'm going to make your name great. I mean, how many people would be able to handle that? Not too many. So I, I know, you know, we can see that God very carefully chose Abraham, obviously. Not many would have been able to do what Abraham did. So I, I honor Abraham for that. That, that to me, is great faith. You see, for Abraham, it wasn't just believing in God. It was now what? Believing in God's word, you see. What caused Abraham to depart as the Lord spoke to him? It was the word of God. So right there is a great example of someone... Abraham, we're talking about, he believed God right off the bat at 75 years old. He acted on the word of God. Oh, my goodness. We could we could preach on that for a while. He acted on the word of God. That's just like healing, too. Remember, healing is not a feeling. It's not a feeling. It's a revelation in believing God's word. That's what healing really is. It has nothing to do with feeling. We miss it so many times because we go, we base everything off feelings. Oh, well, I didn't feel anything. You know what? The blind man that Jesus anointed his eyes with dirt and sent him down to wash, he never felt anything either until he came back seeing. He went down the street the way that he came. But in the action, in the what? Believing God's word, he was healed. He didn't feel anything. And I, I feel the importance to stress that because I've been guilty of this too. You know, we, we, we begin to go off feelings and we, we don't think, or, if, you know, I used to think that I had to fall down all the time. Just for whatever reason, and, and it didn't bother me. I kind of, you know, but I always thought I had to fall down. I realized it doesn't matter if I fall down. Maybe I'll start falling forward. Change it up a little bit. Because the reality is, faith is believing God's word. And whatever manifestation comes, it may come. But it's not in the falling down that you're healed. You're healed because at that moment you believe God's word. And, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, when they came to get Jesus and Jesus said, I'm he, everyone fell over. They all fell back, but I mean, the power of God hit them all. But uh, so let's just take note of that, that faith is acting upon God's word. Healing's the same way. All the things we need, uh, that's why we give. We're believing as we give that God is going to bless us, as it says in Malachi. That's why we give tithes. It's obedience, believing God's word. And it says he'll rebuke the devourer on, on your behalf. Who, who wouldn't want the devourer to be rebuked on, on your behalf? He's talking about Satan. God rebukes Satan for the person that's a giver. The person that pays their tithe, God rebukes Satan for. The person that doesn't, they don't have the full blessing. You have to understand that revelation. My goodness, a lot of Christians suffer because they just don't want to be obedient. Tithing is one of them. Like, I don't think there's any church where everyone pays their tithe. It's always a small or you know a percentage. And the reason is they don't understand the word that well. If you understand the word of God, you would never want to you would never want to miss that. <clears throat> and what is that? That's acting on faith. That that's doing like here, Abraham believed God and and acted upon it. When we give, when we tithe, when we do all the things we do, it's believing God's word and acting upon it. Then the blessing comes, okay? Remember, we always have to step first and then God does his part. So I I I really just think it's great that Abraham was able to do this. He just packed up and just as the Lord said, he just did it. And he believed, do you see uh, chapter 12, those first three verses, the things God says, they didn't happen right at that day. But God said, this is what I'm going to do. 
This is what I'm going to do. So what? Abraham believed it. But it didn't happen that day. Now let's look at Habakkuk 2 too. This will help you here too. Talking about vision, talking about believing God. It says in verse 2, The Lord answered me and said, Write the vision down. Make it plain upon the tables that you may run with it. For the vision is, is yet for an appointed time. But in the end, it'll speak. It will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. That's a powerful scripture to encourage us to, we when we get a word from the Lord, when we have even just the simple thing of God is the healer, um, we have to grab hold of that, write that vision down. And, and the word of God is the vision in, in all these instances. But it's why, so it's before our eyes daily. Because it, here in, in Habakkuk it says, for the vision is not yet, it's for an appointed time, but it will speak. God has spoken things to me that have not happened yet. And I have to hold on to them because when I look in the natural, I can't look in the natural. I'm like, God, this, this doesn't look anything like you said to me. But I see in Abraham's life, he went through the same process that I'm having to go through, right? God said, we'll do great things together. And I, sometimes in the natural, I think, God, what am I doing? What, what's going on? But what I don't realize is some things are for an appointed time. There, there's a season of preparation. There's a season of, of, of like planting, like sowing and reaping. When you put the seeds in the ground, it doesn't just pop up immediately. There's a season. But when you're patient and you and you and you and you uh uh you, you wait for it, you believe for it using the word of God, guess what? That, that begins to grow. And there's a lot of great uh connections to seed time uh, and harvest. And I mean the, the farmer he, he believes God for the rain to water it. How do we water ourselves? With the word of God. Remember, Jesus said to the disciples, it's my words that washed you. You're clean by my words. You know, the disciples didn't have to read the Bible. They had the audio Bible. They had Jesus. <laughs> Jesus was the audio Bible. What was he doing? Talking to them all the time. And by his words, he cleaned them as they received it by faith. You know, he did say that because they, they talked about cleanliness. He said, my words have made you clean. So that's just kind of a funny thought. Jesus was the, the walking audio Bible in the day uh, for the disciples. And anyone who believed in him received that and was able to, to be cleansed by his word. Same way for us today. So while we're planted, while we're doing what we need to do, what do we do? We wash ourselves in the word of God and we continue on forward. Many people and, and some watching uh, today, you, you have things God put in your heart. There's things that you know that God has spoken, but they seem so far away. Well, Abraham experienced that same thing. Look at what God says to Abraham. I'll make you a great nation. I'll bless you. Your name will be great. You will be a blessing. Doesn't it just seem like so out there? Like, what do you mean, God? Imagine Abraham in that moment, like, oh, okay, God, I'll, I'll believe you. Or what about the times when God says to him, Abraham, if you could count the dust on the ground, your, your descendants will be like that. Think about how outlandish God's promises are. But guess what? Every one of them came to pass. Everything God said to Abraham happened. But God encouraged him along the way as well. You know, if you look at the, the time he's called out till even when Isaac is born is 25 years. He's 75 here. He's only 100 when Isaac's born. You have 25 years of things happening. He had challenges he had to face. It wasn't just some smooth ride. But in the end of it, what was Abraham's strength? It was that he believed. Okay, let's look here. So jumping forward now, we're at, he's 75 years old. We're in chapter 12. Let's go over to chapter uh, 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy great reward. Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham, Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And uh, verse 4, Behold, the word of the Lord came to him again, saying, this shall not be thine heir, but he that comes forth out of your own bowels shall be thine heir. 
And he brought him forth and said, look now toward heaven. Here's one of these promises that he gives Abraham. <laughs> That's just so wild, but yet somehow Abraham can believe this. He says, look in the sky at the stars. If you can number them, Abram, so shall your seed be. Think about the stuff God's saying to Abraham. The most craziest, outlandish things. But yet, this is all what's come to pass because every believer today, we're grafted in into the promises, the blessing of Abraham. We're all the children of Abraham through Christ. You see? That's what this was talking about. Abraham probably didn't even realize at that time all that God was really saying here. He, As he walked it out, God began to, to what? expound on it more so you might have a, a message from the lord you may have a word from god and you may not understand everything yet because we all have to realize god wouldn't be able to give it to you all at once you wouldn't be able to handle it right none of us would if we just knew everything on day one i mean how many of you would obey god if he told you everything right off the bat just like the disciples he didn't tell them till much later you know that there would be some hard times facing them like he tells he tells Peter, I believe, that um, you'll be you'll be you'll be led away by against your will with your hands shackled. He didn't tell him that on day one when he called him out of the fishing boat. Follow me, you're going to be led away and killed. He didn't, you know, it was a long ways off till he told him that. But um, but God doesn't reveal everything to us right away because the whole purpose would be we wouldn't need faith. You see. God is a is a is a is a faith is now type of God. You know what God wants from us? Just faith for today. He just wants us to believe for today. That's all he's asking us to do. Just believe for today. But look what it says here. So God's making these wild promises to Abraham, but yet God's serious about this. He's not playing around. These are real. He's when he speaks, it is. It is what it is. That does not change. But look at verse six. It says, Abraham believed the Lord, and it was counted to him for righteousness. What a man of faith. Oh, if we, we need to, to be like Abraham. We need to believe like Abraham. God says things to Abraham, and he just believed them. He just believed them. And he, what? He acted upon them. And they were hard. I mean, you know, we know Sarah and we know Abram both were, were, were doubting it. Okay? That's kind of how we have the birth of Ishmael here. Remember, <clears throat> God's given Abraham these promises. But remember, they're up in age. And the Bible even says that uh, Sarah's womb was closed. So in the natural, now this is where faith really begins to work. It, it, faith really begins to blossom when it looks like in the natural it can't happen. God likes when things look like they can't happen and then they happen. Why? Because he gets all the glory, you see. It brought God a lot of glory to take a woman like Sarah. And, and the Bible records that her womb was shut. Meaning she could not, she could not in the natural have children. It was not going to happen. But God is above the natural. He created all things. He doesn't live by the laws that we live by. God made everything. He can manipulate and do what he wants to it anytime he wants. So a woman like Sarah, but uh, you see that they got impatient. They, you know, the, in Habakkuk, it says that, you know, the vision is for an appointed time. And that would have been hard. I mean, come on, how many of you? would be 80 some years old and God says you're going to have a child through your own wife and it'll be your own lineage. I mean that that would be tough, right? People today's world they tell you in your 40s it could have there could be a danger to having a child. I I would never receive that. I think you could safely have a child at 50, 60, 70. Why? Because if God's in it it'll happen. I don't ever take the report of the world. I think they say like as soon as you're in your late 30s now and there's a danger for the well, I don't believe any of that at all. I don't care what kind of thoughts and comments the world has. They, they, that means nothing to me. I could see my God here brought forth a child and a woman 99 years old. So as far as I'm concerned, you could give birth up to 99. Why not? God's done it once. He's not a respecter of person. That may be outside some people's faith, but you see, God likes when it, when it doesn't look like it can happen. Then he'll make it happen because he gets the glory. But... Look at the challenge that they had to they had to fight these thoughts of and this is what we have to battle. God says, Abraham, your it'll be through your seed. He when he called him out at 75, he he said it'll be through your seed. Abraham should have known then God meant his seed. And uh well, I mean, Ishmael was his seed, but even more so from his wife. 
He wanted it to be through through Abraham and, and, and Sarah. And Hebrews 10, 23 says, let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering, for he's faithful that promise. You see, the life of faith is holding fast. <laughs> you can't go off of what it looks like, right? Because God can turn things around in just a moment. Maybe you're sick and the doctor said, well, you can't be healed. You know, God, God's not moved by that at all. He already said, it's possible you are healed. Okay? If you're lacking in finances, it, it, your bank statement might not look real good. Guess what? It's, God's not worried about it because he already said you're blessed. He's already done these things, but it is challenging for us in those moments to believe. Okay? I've battled sicknesses and I've I've battled financial lack, so I can't say it's always easy, but guess where I find my faith at? Out of the Word of God. When I'm battling a thing, I'll just go look at, look how Abraham could do it. If he could do it, I could do it. If he could believe to have a child against all odds, when everyone said it's not possible, yet what did he do? He held fast to the profession of faith. Without wavering, we got to just be sold out to God's Word. That's why even in the days we live, you know, we're in the end times. We've always been. We've been in the end times for 2,000 years. You know, the disciples and them thought Jesus was coming back like next week. They, they, they thought it was going to be like within a week he'd be back. They didn't realize because they were asking him all kind of questions about, well, you know, they even thought one of the disciples uh, wouldn't die because of the, the question. They didn't realize we're going to go on for a couple thousand years here. But this is how you don't have to be moved so easily when tragedy comes or or when destruction falls or when a virus comes you know people that are sound in the word of god and have faith they're, they're not going to be easily moved but those that don't get in the word and never really allow god's word to fill them they're easily moved you'll see that the next time something happens in the world you could tell who's easily moved and who isn't but those that have faith you're not going to be easily moved because god already is with you you know he already sees your whole life God, in one of these promises, the Lord, in one of the promises to Abraham, even said, and, and you're, they'll be, they'll be uh, enslaved for 400 years. You know, God revealed a, to Abraham the, the, the slavery in Egypt, that that would take place and it would be 400 years. He, down to the day, God already said, this is what it'll be. So we, we, we need to just trust in the Lord because why? He's already been there. He's already there tomorrow with you and me in whatever challenge we face. He's already there. God's not surprised when, he, when we wake up in the morning and something's different or there's a hardship or whatever. He's already there. He just wants us to do what? Believe. Believe God's word. Not just in God, but in his word. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith. That's why we got to be a day in and day out uh, word type of people. Those that aren't in the Word, those that, I mean, this is not just a Sunday thing. This is an everyday thing. Because there's no way you can navigate the challenges of life without the Word of God every day. And I, I, I could challenge myself to even take it up. I need more of God's Word. More of God's Word to where everything is nothing, but God's Word is everything. That's where I'm going with it. Let us hold fast. Let's look at Genesis uh, 17. And it's great we have these wonderful examples. I mean, without the Bible, we'd be in trouble. We'd have nothing to look at. We'd have nothing to encourage us. When I see Abraham, I'm encouraged by his faith, how he could just believe God. With the promises God made to Abraham, that would have shaken anybody. You're going to be blessed. You're going to have, you know, if you can count the grains of sand, if you can count the stars, what in the world, God? But now we know what that meant. All the inheritance of the earth comes through the lineage of Abraham. You know, in Matthew, it goes down through the lineage all the way to Jesus. That's what God had to set up all the way from here and then before. But the promises to Abraham, I, I want you to see that that must have sounded like just wild to Abraham. What do you mean, God? Like, but he just believed him. He just believed him. Genesis 17, verse 9. God said unto Abraham, Thou, you will keep my covenant, therefore. You and your seed after thee in their generations, this is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and the seed after you. Every man, child among you will be circumcised. You shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. It shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. 
Wow. So now this covenant's getting a little more serious. I think that's standard procedure in the medical world today to do circumcision. But do you know this is where it's first introduced right here? That was the covenant God made with Abraham. Why? Because there was the shedding of blood. That was a real, that's a blood covenant. Circumcision was a blood covenant. But do you know what's neat about Abraham? Abraham, as God tells him this, this is how you know Abraham believed. Now look, this is something you might not have realized. You know, Abraham was not circumcised all his life. There was no circumcision back then. They didn't do that. It was not a thing. God introduced it as the covenant. But look what happens to Abraham here. Look at verse 23. And Abraham took Ishmael his son and all that were born in the house and all that were bought with his money, every male among of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the same day that God said to do. <laughs> Look at verse 24. This is crazy to me. When I read this, that's just something I never really thought about. Verse 24. Abraham was 90 years old, 99. Abraham was 99 when he was when he circumcised his flesh. Do you realize Abraham went his entire life uncircumcised, but when God said, and, and this is our covenant, this is this is going to be your part to do, Abraham. You're going to circumcise yourself and all your men. And guess what? He believed God and was obedient. Imagine if it was that way today. Imagine if men were born in no circumcision, and as an adult male, I mean, it's obviously not that way, but this is what happened here. God said, it, okay, the covenant's going to be, you're going to be circumcised now. How many Christian men would, would stick with that? You know what I mean? You, 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 that would push out a lot of people. If, to, be, to be a Christian, imagine if it were like this. I just want you to see what type of faith Abraham had, because this is what it would require today. You, all your life. I'm 42 this month, right? Imagine if I was uncircumcised and all of a sudden, and I got saved and God said, to be saved now, you're going to be circumcised. How many people would do that? Nobody would do that. Hardly anybody. Why? Because it would cost them something. See, that's the thing here. You got to understand, Abraham's faith cost him something. It wasn't just well, I'm Abraham, I'm the father of many nations. He had to circumcise himself at 99 years old. Take a sharp knife and remove the foreskin of his private area because God required that of him to be in covenant. You see, what I'm getting at is he, got, Abraham really believed God. And we hear about Isaac, you know, that he, he, he was asked to offer him, but I think this is pretty major here too. I mean, I've never heard that before, but at 99 years old, he, he was circumcised. That to me says Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God. And God knew that he could trust Abraham with the generations of the earth. You see, Abraham was a special individual. He was not just, he was, he was a natural man like us, but what a special individual. Because anything God said, Abraham would just do. Oh, you know how many times I've had to repent because, God, I'm sorry I didn't do what you said do. Lord, I'm sorry I was lazy. Lord, I'm sorry that I just didn't do what you said do. Lord, help me be more like Abraham. What, did, what was great about Abraham's faith? He would just do what God said. Abraham never is recorded as questioning God, so to speak. 75 years old, Abraham go. He gets up and goes. 99 years old. They're in a covenant now, and God says you're gonna be you're gonna circumcise yourself today. Okay. Takes a rock, cuts the foreskin off, and all his family and everyone, and they're good to go. Never questions God. I'm not just imagine yourself. A Christian today would fight that tooth and nail. Well, God, why do I have to do that? I'm not doing that. That's gonna hurt. God, it's gonna bleed. That's gonna be gross. It's gonna be disgusting. I'm not doing that, God. Abraham never did that. He just did it because he knew that he could trust God and God was going to come through on these promises. I, I take my hats off to Abraham. I can't even say that I have faith like Abraham because God is, I mean, I've been challenged by God, but I want you to try to put yourself where Abraham was. Abraham was willing to just do anything, whatever sacrifice it meant. And we, and I'm not even, I don't even have so much. I wasn't going to talk about the sacrifice of Isaac, but that, that was the, that was like the, the major one for Abraham. Because, you know, just imagine Abraham. But what did God want to know? He wanted to see that Abraham trusted him, that Abraham believed him. And God might ask you to do some hard, th hard things. I remember being on a mission trip in Nicaragua, and I felt like the Lord, I, this is how, I don't know, I felt, I felt like the Lord told me to just 
empty your bank account on these people in this village. I was like, what, God? What are you talking about? I really felt like God was saying, I didn't do that, but I did I did help them to where, you know, in, in a way, but I, I felt like God was challenging me to just give everything away. And I didn't do it. I don't know. I know it was God, but I didn't do it. No, I, I did do something, but I didn't do quite that. But I'm just wondering, had that been Abraham, he would have probably done it. You know, God knew I wasn't gonna, but he, he, he wanted to test me out a little bit and see what would I be willing to give up for him. And that's what we have to ask ourselves. What would we be willing to give up for God? Because God might put his finger on it. I've had to give up drinking coffee already. God put his finger on it for whatever reason, probably because the caffeine was making me too jumpy or whatever it was. But God sometimes will put his finger on that thing that is hardest for us to give up. He did it to Abraham. He asked Abraham, Abraham, do you love me? Then I want you to sacrifice your son. Abraham never questioned God on that either. But what did he say? God will provide. Even when Isaac asked his dad, said, Dad, where's the sacrifice? Abraham never never even uh, flinched for a moment. He said, son, don't worry. God will provide. But that that is faith. Remember, faith wasn't just Abraham believing in a God. He was. It was Abraham believing and acting on God's word. Oh, if we could get that just in different areas of our own lives, just to believe God and act on his word. Look at Genesis 18, what it says. Verse 14, is anything too hard for the Lord? This is what God, this is how God responds to Abraham. You know, God takes this stuff seriously. When we don't believe God, he's offended. And this is how he'll respond. By, but God, by, God would say, quiet. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I'll return unto thee according to the time of life. And your wife, Sarah, shall have a son. Sometimes we got to watch what we say. God, God gets offended when we don't believe him. Because nothing's impossible for him. He may want to do something wild in your life. But we can't question it. We just got to do it. Think about uh, John the Baptist's father. When he questioned the angel about the what the, the plan of God was, he shut his mouth for that whole entire time that she was pregnant. Because really he couldn't be trusted to say anything dumb. I think he shut his mouth because he didn't want him to, to, to come against the plan of God anymore. You know that that's what happened to him. Zacharias. When he questioned the angel of the Lord, he shut his mouth. He became like a dumb man. He couldn't even talk. Oh, I hope the Lord never has to do that to me. But I mean, <laughs> it's not out of the rule book here. It could happen. Why? Because the only thing that's allowed to come out of our mouth is, yes, Lord, I believe you. Anything else is, is not going to cut it with God. Anything else is not going to cut it. The only thing the Lord wants to hear out of us is, yes, Lord, I believe you. And I'm taking your directions and instructions and going forward. That's the only thing God wants to hear. <laughs> oh, thank you for the, the wonderful word of your, uh, that you've given us, God, to, to encourage us. But that's how, you know, when, they, when Abraham was kind of not sure about he's like, Lord, how, you know, how can a man like me be, give birth? The Lord quieted him down real quick. Is anything too hard for God? Do you know what the hardest thing for the lord is to do get his people to believe his word that is a challenge for god but when it comes to seeing the word through that's not a challenge for god he does do that the challenge is can we just believe him many people just have a head knowledge of god but that 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 ain't gonna do anything for you we gotta actually begin to walk this out just like abraham has done now look at what it says in ecclesiastics 3 1 because remember you may have that vision in your heart and it seems like god why does it seem like it's taking so long why does it seem like i'm going backwards not forward hey don't fret look what it says to everything there's a season and to a time to every purpose under the heaven do you see god is working us through these harder moments these times of stretching all to what get us to that place that he's called us to from day one. We can't be uh, frustrated. Now look what happens in Genesis 21, verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto her as he spoke. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. 
Do you see exactly like God said it came to pass? They just had to believe. And these were unusual circumstances. I mean, Abraham, his faith was tested. But what? He was found righteous before God. Why was Abraham found righteous? Because it was, what was the Bible say? It was accounted unto him under righteous. What? Because he believed the Lord. That's what Abraham, Abraham's, one of, one of his best qualities was, his best attribute. You know what it was? He believed the Lord. God could say anything to him. It's a lot different for us to have the Bible. We're going back to Genesis. This was, this was as Abraham went, God spoke. It, he didn't have anything ahead of time. We're reading his life, how he got called at 75. And then now they're in covenant. Now he's going to circumcise himself at 99 years old. And then now you're going to have a child and all these things. But God never failed one letter of the word to Abraham. Even when Abraham made a mistake, in a sense, you could say, because he, he, he told Pharaoh, this is my sister. He was, you know, he told Pharaoh Sarah was his sister. He was worried that they would kill him and take her because she was so beautiful. So Pharaoh, not thinking anything of it, takes her. But guess what happens? His whole, Pharaoh's whole household became cursed. Because remember one of the promises that God made. What was it? One of the promises that God made. He says, I'll bless them that bless you and curse him that curse you. Well, you couldn't touch Abraham's wife. Any man that tried to touch Abraham's wife was a dead man. Why? Because God said, I'll, you see, he was, God was good on his word. You see, poor Pharaoh had no clue what was coming to him. I think God came to him in a dream and said, you're a dead man. To even get near Abraham's wife, you will die. That's why Abraham went out to battle with only like 300 men to fight these armies that were coming against the king of Sodom and them. And guess what? He was victorious. Abraham could have taken his 300 and taken all anybody. It could have been an army of a million. He would have won. Why? It was impossible for Abraham to fail if he would just do what? Believe God's word. That's the word of the Lord for us this morning. It's impossible for us to fail if what? We can believe the word of the Lord. Deuteronomy 31.8, the Lord, he it is that does go before us. He will be with you. He will not fail you. Neither will he forsake you. Fear not. And don't be dismayed. Psalms 92, 12. We'll close with this. The last scripture for you. The righteous shall flourish like palm trees. Shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord will flourish in the courts of their God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing amen and then let me read you one more isaiah 40 31 they this is probably the best one here to finish on because this was about abraham's life remember god called him at, at at 75 but it was for big plans and it i'm sure it stretched abraham but he believed but look what it says here in verse 31 they that wait upon the lord will renew their strength they will mount up with eagles' wings. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and, and they shall what? They shall not faint or they shall not give up. They'll do what? They'll continue to believe God's word. And it'll be counted unto them just like Abraham. It'll be counted unto you. It'll be counted unto you, righteous. Because you believe God's word. And God will perform every single letter of every word spoken over your life amen let's pray father i thank you in the name of jesus for your word lord i pray that we receive that touch today god in whatever hard times we're battling lord many people are struggling many are fighting sickness or financial lack and all the different things that we face god but lord you are faithful you are faithful god and we believe with all our hearts, Lord, that you will do the things you said, just like Abraham, God. You never failed Abraham. When he was fighting his enemies, God, you never failed him. When he was struggling to believe, God, you came through every step of the way, Lord. And God, we receive that 
today, Lord. We receive that word for our own lives, Lord. Let that be our portion today. And I believe that for you at home as well. And I just speak blessing over you in the name of Jesus. Amen.